welcome to the MB Wildman channel. On today's video, I'm going to show you an excerpt from a DVD series called Focus on Trapping. It was designed here in Canada and it was designed to teach people or show people the proper methods for trapping, how to do it, how to handle the fur, all of those things. Great information for the beginner. Also great for the experienced trapper that wants just a little bit of a refresher or some new ideas for sets or anything like that. If you haven't yet subscribed to the MB Wildman channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We certainly do appreciate the support. And uh, if you like the videos, feel free to comment and I certainly would appreciate any support you got on the channel. So without further ado, here we go. Focus on trapping. Wedge the trap between the trees. A piece of meat attached to the trigger is all that's needed to attract the animal. The trapper sets the box trap on two dry poles to keep it off the ground. This will make it easier to remove the trap later, and it keeps the animal's paws from freezing. The next step is to fasten the box securely to a tree. The wire mesh cage can also be used for trapping raccoons. It's equipped with a sliding door that drops suddenly when the fisher tries to get the bait wired to the back of the cage.
Actually, the main difference between trapping raccoons and fishers is the special care trappers must take to camouflage the box. The fisher must go into the cage as if it were entering a dark hole in its natural environment. This reduces the animal's stress when it's captured. Finish the set by placing a scented lure near the trap. On a part of the pole that has already been leveled, the trapper drives in three nails in the form of a triangle. The main bait is attached to one of the ends of the pole, which is at least seven or eight feet above the ground, while the other end is fastened to another tree about one foot from the ground. Before setting the pole in place permanently, it's important to make sure that there aren't any branches of the tree that the fisher could use to bypass the trap and get directly to the bait. If there are, the trapper cuts them down with his axe. For the same reason, the trapper also makes sure that the bait is at least five feet out from the tree. If it's too close, the fisher would have no trouble jumping from the tree to the bait and returning the same way. This error is easily corrected by raising the bottom of the pole a little to distance the other end from the tree trunk. The trapper sets the trap on the pole a short distance from the bait. The method used is fairly simple. The base of the corner bear is held in place by the three nails in the form of a triangle. 
The trigger, which is on the upper part of the trap, should be facing the fisher as it comes up the pole, so that it's captured by the neck and not by the middle of the body. The trapper attaches the conibear chain fairly high on the pole, between the trap and the bait. This precaution is necessary so that when the animal is captured and hanging at the end of the chain, it will be out of reach of rodents and carnivores. A good way to get the fisher to pass through the conibear opening is to put a stick in the two trap springs which have been raised above the trap. This trick will discourage the animal from jumping over the set to get to the bait. Before attaching the second bait to the bottom of the pole, the trapper rubs it on the surrounding trees and along the pole, leaving as much scent as possible around the trap. Finally, he coats a small stick with lure and leaves it at the foot of the tree. In a mixed forest, near water and on a slope where the forest cover is fairly thick, the trapper chooses two trees about 20 inches apart to build the fisher cubby. The fisher cubby is usually made of dry wood poles piled about two and a half to three feet high. About 18 inches off the ground, the trapper makes a hiding place for the conibear. The rest of the cubby is completely covered with branches.
When spruce or fir branches are used to make the roof of the cubby, don't forget to push a few forward to jut out over the trap. Doing this prevents snow or freezing rain from interfering with the trap. The bait is placed in the middle of the cubby, about six inches from the trigger. This is very important. Place a lure both inside and outside the cubby. The base of the conibear rests on another horizontal pole, but a precaution must be taken here. The trapper uses his axe to cut a notch on the top of this pole so that the dog will move properly when the trap is sprung. The trap used here is a Conibear 220. The trapper puts a dry wooden pole in the two springs of the trap. This pole will be attached horizontally above the entrance to the cubby. The pole and trap are now set in place and attached with wire. As is done each time a corner bear is set, the trapper attaches the trap chain securely to a tree. Don't forget to use the safety gripper when handling a conibear type trap. The trigger, slightly open, should always be on the bottom of the trap. As for the dog, it should be placed or pointed towards the inside of the cubby so that the animal doesn't accidentally spring it with a paw. Also make sure that the safety hooks have been taken out of the springs and that the safety gripper has been taken off. Otherwise, the fisher could manage to take the bait without being caught. Fishers are known for their ability to squeeze into the narrowest places. It's never a waste of time to check to be sure that the conibear opening is the only way the animal can get to the bait.
Adding a few extra poles to the entrance makes the bait more accessible to smaller fishers. Finally, the trapper uses branches to block every other possible entry to the cubby. Trappers must use trapping techniques and sets that are as humane as possible. By respecting the fur berry resource and the environment, and by practicing good trap line management, trappers help maintain the balance and the continuity of this resource, ensuring that it will be the heritage of future generations.